Ah, my question that's plagued mankind for years. Hi, I'm Mr. Brandt. You might remember me from such educational films as Abraham Lincoln, We Hardly Knew Ye, and Acne, The Silent Killer. Today we're going to talk about mathematics' best friend, the linear equation. We'll explore different ways to graph points on the coordinate plane, and also how to graph equations, not just any equation, but linear equations. Follow me now to the coordinate plane. Oh, don't be fooled by the clever name. It's not really a plane. It doesn't fly through the air. It's more like a wall that you hang things off of. Here she is, the most beautiful coordinate plane the world has ever seen. Go! Okay, okay, that's enough, that's enough. Calm down, calm down. When you first look at this, you might say, hey, that just looks like two lines across in the center. And in a way, you're right. But in another way, you're completely wrong. There's a whole lot going on in these two seemingly simple intersecting lines, as you call it. First of all, for starters, they're not lines. Sure, they might look like it. If you had to draw a line, you would draw something very similar. And if I asked you to draw two lines that intersect, you'd be fine. They'd look perfectly normal. Uh, but these really aren't lines. We have special names for these that we call axes. These two axes have very, very, very important significance. The one that goes horizontal across the center from left to right, that's what we call our x-axis. The one that goes up and down, the vertical axis, that's our y-axis. Now along these two axes, we assign different numerical values. Just like the number line that you've worked with in the past, it's the exact same thing, except now we're working in two dimensions instead of one. You can see the x-axis we've already broken down. Where the y-axis intersects it, we call that zero. That's right in the middle. Makes sense. To the right, we have our positive values, and for this example, we just increased by one. To the left, we have our negative values. After all, numbers can be positive or negative, and we do the same thing for the y. As we go up, we're increasing, we have our positive y values, and as we go down on our y-axis, we have our negative y values. It all makes sense, right? Wait, what? Of course, there's more to it than that. You didn't think we'd stop there, did you? We've got our x-axis, our y-axis, our positive and negative values moving up, down, left, and right all over the place. However, first thing you probably noticed, or at least the first thing you should have noticed, is that it's split up into four equal sections. Each of these sections we call quadrants, and because mathematicians are real boring, they're just labeled quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. The reason we have these labeled is mainly so that it's a little bit easier to describe an equation when we graph it. Sometimes it's easier to say, oh, that equation goes through quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, as opposed to having to draw out the entire equation and show somebody how to do it. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mr. B, what's the point in really learning all about this coordinate plane? It seems kind of boring. And, yes, it might be, but there is a very good reason why I'm explaining all this to you. You see, all the unwanted equations in the world end up on the coordinate plane. But first, before I show you how to do that, we need to figure out how to plot individual points. How do we plot a single coordinate on this graph? Here we have a simple, everyday, run-of-the-mill coordinate. You can see it's two numbers separated by a comma inside parentheses. These two numbers we have special names for. The first number, the 5, that's our x-coordinate. And the second number, the 3, that's our y-coordinate. If you remember, that's real similar to our coordinate plane, which had x and y axes. These are very, very closely related. Now, if we go back to our coordinate plane, and if we want to plot this point on that graph, it's really quite simple. Remember how I said the first number is our x-coordinate, the second number is our y-coordinate, and we have that x and y axes. All we have to do is move over 5 on the x-axis, since that's our x-coordinate, and from that point, move up 3 on our y-axis, since that's our y-coordinate. It's simple. We move over 5, up 3, and we plot our point. Now you try one. Try plotting the point negative 6, 4. What do you think's going to happen with that negative 6? Should I do that? Just follow the same steps we did for 5, 3. Since it's negative 6, and that's our x-coordinate, move back 6 on our x-axis, and from that point, move up 4 on the y-axis, since our y-coordinate's positive 4. Yeah. So plotting points is pretty easy. 
Our main goal, however, is to make sure that we can graph a linear equation. Before we do that, we have to make sure we understand fully what a linear equation really is. So, let's take a small break. When we get back, we'll take a look at the equation, examine all of its parts, and we'll move on and finish up this lesson. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Everything that's wonderful is what I feel when we're together. Brighter than a lucky penny when you're near the rain goes, disappears, dear, and I feel so fine just to know that you are mine. My life is Welcome back. Now, let's get the, down to business with our linear equations. I guess to start off, I'll just simply give you an example y equals 3x plus 5, a perfectly good example of a linear equation. If you notice, we have an x and a y, we also have our 3 and our 5. They're all separated, they're all in their own individual parts. They are in certain places for a reason. The 3 represents our slope. Slope meaning how steep the line is. It might go up really, really steep, or it might just kind of ease on down. It might be real shallow. That's what the slope is. The 5, that represents our y-intercept. Y-intercept meaning where it intersects or where it touches the y-axis. Now the y and the x, they will always be in your equation. Well, they might use g or f or a or b. It might not always be y or x, but there's always going to be two variables in your linear equation. They're just variables. They represent the values on the x and y axis that we talked about earlier. Now, this equation, y equals 3x plus 5, has a more general version that we refer to more often. It's called slope-intercept form. The slope-intercept form of an equation looks like this, y equals mx plus b, where m is the value of our slope, in our case, 3, and b is the value for your y-intercept, in our case, 5. This is just the general form. You should get to know this very, very well. You should memorize it, actually. Because when you have an equation that is in slope-intercept form, that's probably the easiest it's ever going to be in order to graph it. Now, if we're going to graph this equation, very simple. Remember, we said that 5 was our y-intercept. That's where it intersects the y-axis. So, in order to start, what we do is we take that 5, we take our y-intercept, and we simply put a point, we just draw a simple dot, right on 5 on the x-axis. This will serve as a starting point for our graph. Now, if we return to our equation, we already know that 5 is the y-intercept. We got that taken care of. Now we want to focus on the 3. We want to worry about our slope. After all, we've only plotted one point of our line. We have to draw in the entire thing. What you want to do with the 3, and I'll explain this a little bit and you'll be able to see it better in a second, with the 3, you want to change it into a fraction. Now, you're thinking, how do I change that into a fraction? Well, you should know that anything over 1, you get the exact same thing. So if we turn 3 into 3 divided by 1, where 3 is our numerator, 1 is our denominator, it's still the exact same slope. We didn't change anything. It's the exact same number. When we graph our slope, the 3, the numerator, represents the rise, or the vertical distance, and the 1 in the denominator, that represents the run, the horizontal distance. So when we graph our line, we're going to start at our y-intercept, 5, and we're going to move up 3, and then we're going to move to the right. This idea of rise over run is very commonly used as the definition of slope. The rise is the vertical, the run is the horizontal.